and welcome to the Venture Forum podcast. My name is Kyle Golding. I am your host. I'm here today with Ryan and QK from StablePay, a very interesting application for the cannabis industry that's based in crypto. A couple of things I don't know very much about. I don't think many people do yet. So we're going to learn some interesting things today. So right off the bat, QK and Ryan, introduce yourselves and then tell us kind of how StablePay started as an idea and and what the process has been so far. Yeah. Hi, I'm I'm Ryan. Uh, So the idea basically started November 2021. I was teaching crypto to a room mostly full of people from the cannabis industry. And at the end, I was, they told me all their issues with cash only and not being able to get banking services. I asked them like, hey, why don't you use crypto as payment? Do the federal laws, right? Yeah, do the federal laws. And and it's just a new technology too, uh, as well. So it's one of those things like, yeah, it sounds great, but how do we use this technology to be able to do the thing you're asking us to do? Uh, so from there, that's kind of where the idea for stable pay was born. Uh, and I was like, okay, if I can figure out a way to make crypto uh, be be a form of payment for them and include like an inventory management system and, and compliance for Oklahoma in this, this could be a product that would change the, the whole landscape of what they're doing in the and state. Finance is your background. Yeah, my, uh, traditional finance is my background. I've got a master's in accounting. Uh, I worked in public accounting for four years, and then I worked as a director of finance for a media company here in OKC uh, right. before doing this. Now, QK, what's your background and how did you get involved in this idea? Yeah, so, um, hi, my name is QK Douglas. I am a business compliance attorney here in Oklahoma City. Okay. Um, I'm currently working at my own firm, QKI Consulting, and that's kind of how I got linked to Ryan in the first place because I'm also um, a crypto enthusiast, so I would post different things. Um, Within crypto, like he said, it is new and it is something that is uh, kind of a disruptive technology that is able to open up doors for certain industries that weren't necessarily there before. Right. The problem is um, when something's new, people are a little (laughs) fearful of how it will work and what will be the implications and how that's going to affect their businesses and the technology. And so it's something that interested me because not only will it disrupt um, a lot of tech uh, industries. It will also disrupt fintech. It'll also disrupt law. There's just right. a lot There's of a facets trickle effect, of crypto. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of how I got involved because again, my background is legal, so I'm not really in finance, but the crypto side of it really interested me because I also have background in banking. I was in banking for about four or five years before I went to law school. And so seeing how disrupt this, this, disruptive this would be to the financial industry was just something that was super interesting to me. So I deep dived into crypto in 2020 when everybody was at home um, and just became an enthusiast and an advocate ever since then. Um, and so Ryan and I also got together through that because he saw that I was also as interested as crypto as he is. Maybe not having the financial uh, background so much, but definitely having some of the technical understanding and then also being in the legal field, it seemed like a great partnership to move forward and also move the vision forward because we both have that kind of fine foundational understanding. Because every, every good business, whether it's a new business or existing business, needs to understand financial, needs to understand legal ramifications of anything they absolutely, do. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And disruptive technologies is often yes. an opportunity, right? Exactly. A chance to do something new and maybe solve an old problem in a new way. Yeah. Right, another great basis for business, right? Absolutely. Yep. So the idea of maybe crypto could help the cannabis industry, how did it go from that to something that potentially end up being stable pay? Yeah, so once once I talked to the people at the that I was teaching, uh, I went to QK about it. She is legal, right? So she's always trying right. to poke holes so in everything. Start, yeah, start with your lawyer. That's so a good I brought place. the whole idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, so I brought the whole idea to her. Uh, she tried to poke holes and it couldn't. Uh, mm-hmm. So I brought her on board as, as co-founder for Stable Pay. Um, so from there, we basically went and did a discovery with the idea with Clever, which is a local software developer right. here in OKC. And Clever has been a presenter for OVF before. So OVF folks should be pretty familiar with the, t- the technology uses that those guys create. Yeah, we love, we love uh, Matt Williamson and mm-hmm. Clever over there. Um, so we went through a uh, discovery process with them for a few days. Mm-hmm. And they basically took the, the idea from a battle axe to like a guided missile, uh, <laughs> refining it and make it even better. Uh, so through that process, we figured out how to actually build it. So the archetype, the, the blueprint was built through that. Uh, the next piece we, we needed to figure out was the cybersecurity because we're bringing these people in from a cash only uh, basis to a right. completely digital basis. So the cash only, they were using armed guards. They'd have a safe that weighed 5,000 pounds, multiple properties that they'd use to protect their money. 
Uh, so Critical Fault was one that we found that's also a local Oklahoma uh, right. uh, business that we could use for cybersecurity. For Another that. company that's pissed for OVF before, so OVF folks are familiar with Critical <laughs> Fault. Uh, very smart people here in Oklahoma as well. Good good partners that you're putting together so far. Yeah. Great ecosystem. Yeah, because right. mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm traditional finance. She's legal. Uh, we have both like a basis in crypto, but we, we're not technical. We don't have software development expertise. Right. Uh, so these are the two partners that we we look for to to fill that gap for us because at the end of the day it's technology but it's financial like there's plenty of opportunities for the bad guys to try to try to to break in and get a hold of 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 the of the money involved right oh yeah definitely so is stable pay a is it a web application is it an app like how does it how is it f- meant to function the initial thought process with Clever that we went through is a web application that will eventually be an application. Okay. Uh, the reason why there's there's a lot less barriers for MVP if it's just a website that people log into to get to, uh, with the application being later because Apple uh, Apple's a little more stringent on on the applications sure. they'll let in. Android's a little bit easier, but that's why we thought with an app website first that'd be the way to go for MVP. Is this something maybe also too that you could partner with uh, the point of sale systems or any other sort of applications, whether apps, etc. To, to kind of maybe bolt on this technology to what they're doing? Yeah, so that was one of the things that Clever found initially was a, a POS partner for mm-hmm. that, uh, which is going to be Circle for us. Okay, uh, great. Mm-hmm. So you started with an idea, started uh, following the idea, added partners with different capabilities, uh, secure technical issues, uh, starting to work towards what, what we refer to as an MVP, right? A minimally viable product. Where are you in that process and where do you feel like you're at today yeah so it's, it's been a long process right basically going from november last year to december this year um we've we basically figured out the blueprint of how to make it uh and we're just now basically wanting to get funding uh to be able to create the mvp put a little uh, rocket fuel on it and yeah <laughs> make it take off right yeah yeah so we've got to got, got to know the ecosystem here for entrepreneurs right. uh where like uh generator uh ovf uh all these resources now are what we've been going through to basically find the funding it's a great time to be doing such things in oklahoma city isn't it yes. <laughs> yeah good yes, good thing is. this wasn't 10 years ago it would be a harder conversation <laughs> mm-hmm. right, right so you're in that process you're working with community partners you're working with different things as you are pitching and applying for funding what is your vision? What are the hopes as you, as you think to yourself, you know, now we get into to the theoretical part of what, where you think this can go. Where do you think it can go and how do you think uh, the right partners are going to help you make that happen? Yeah, so the way I, th- I think it will go is this could revolutionize Oklahoma as a state. Uh, I think it could become the, the capital of, of crypto uh, in the U.S. because once we're able to make this technology work for cannabis, which was $831 million in 2020, uh, we could remit a lot of sales tax to the state of Oklahoma using crypto. But also there's a lot of, there's about, that could potentially change that number and that scope really could change. We have a vote coming up in early 2023 on not just medical marijuana, but recreational marijuana. So the the cannabis industry, potentially, if that vote passes, could enlarge greatly, which then could also, the benefit could could exponentially be better for the, the retailers, the state of Oklahoma, et cetera, right? Yeah, definitely. The, the need will be even bigger. Yeah, it would it would grow on the compliance side as well, because I think another part of what we're trying to do as well is help to make a safer industry. Right now, um, I know not, maybe not listeners are familiar with what the cannabis industry looks like right now. It's very much like the wild, wild west, right? right? And there's a lot of implementation going in for safety measures, not just, you know, to crack down on businesses and make it harder for people to get in. Um, as we all know right now, there's a moratorium currently on commercial licenses in the cannabis industry as well. And so the goal is to make it to where we can have some type of knowledge and control over how these products are being distributed, who gets these products, especially before we get to the recreational side, because exactly like you said, it's going to be an explosive industry. And that's great on the business side, but we're talking about cybersecurity. We're talking about regulation. We're talking about compliance, because when we think about it, this is not only just a medical product, it's a product that's ingested, which means there's a lot of different aspects that touch that. And so our product is made to help with the reporting. It's made to help on the business side with keeping things in track. Um, there's also an inventory management system that is connected to our product okay. as well, which will make it easier when you're tracking your sale to exactly what you have in inventory, which is hugely important when we're talking about transport and also seed to sale, um, which is something that has 
honestly been a big issue for right. some of the some of the compliance here in Oklahoma City. So as he's saying, cannabis industry is ripe for this type of product. But we plan on expanding outside of that to supply chain, small mom and pops. If you've ever gone someplace and they're like, oh, you have to do so and so amount for a credit card or we don't take credit uh, card right, or yeah, debit right. cards, you know, minimum fees or minimum exactly, charges. Exactly. Exactly. This product would help to eliminate some of those things or at least lower the barrier to entry so that you can kind of get in with the times in 2020. I hear a lot of times people are like or 2022 people are like, um, why can't I swipe my card or why can't I do um, an electronic transaction here? You know, what, what's the problem? Not understanding the burden that is on the merchant and the business right. owner to actually make that a possibility, right? And as much as you think that the technology has kind of ramped up into this uh, 21st century, it really hasn't. Um, financial uh, industries have so much regulation that covers them. And so having some technological advancement seems like a great idea until you start getting into the implementation phases which is really hard for business owners right. to make sure that they're compliant because they can get slapped down easily too, right. even if they're in a fully federally regulated and legal industry, not to mention one that's not federal. Legal, right? <laughs> this is true, right? <laughs> Absolutely. There's been a lot of things in, in the media about the state of Oklahoma being concerned. Maybe they're not collecting Correct. all the taxes that they can. And part Correct. of part of the trade-off of, of doing something that was previously illegal and, and looked down on had stigma attached to it mm -hmm. and doing medical marijuana. And if, and then if, if recreational gets passed is the, the tax base is the benefit to the, to the city, to the state, Absolutely. Um, all those things. So better compliance, better mm -hmm. reporting, all of those things are just going to help the industry Absolutely. as a whole, right? Along Absolutely. with the individuals who be using as well. Absolutely. And that's the real goal of, of expansion um, because we want to provide something that, because again, there's competitors out there that are providing piecemeals of what we're trying to do, right. but we want to do it in a way that's streamlined, that's modern, and that also adds an enhancement with that cybersecurity piece. A lot of times right now, you go in and speak to some of these dispensary owners, they're not thinking that far ahead because right now they're just trying to survive, you know, what they're <laughs> just doing Just trying right to keep now. the rent paid, right? Exactly, exactly. But as things start to progress and you start to think about the future, you have to think about the regulations to keep yourself in business because that's what brings longevity. Right. You can't stay in business without thinking that way. And so that's what our product is made to do. It's made to bring some of these businesses, all of these businesses that will touch our products more into the 21st century and will be able to help on both sides with the reporting and with the usage of your POS system and your inventory management. Right. And obviously there are multiple states that currently have legal, either medical or medical and recreational Correct. marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, elections and, and ballot issues, et cetera, are kind of coming up on a regular basis where at some point majority of states are going to have some form of cannabis industry Absolutely. within it, right? So your Absolutely. market continues to expand and grow for the opportunity for, for a product like this. Yes. Yeah. So I, once it's been successful here in Oklahoma right. for a few years, I can see other states like Colorado, California saying, hey, we love how you're remitting sales tax to us and reporting. Can we bring the product over to our state as well? So what's the, obviously there's a lot of, we talked about uh, a lot of, it's new technology. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of misconception, a lot of people not trusting it yet, mm -hmm. et cetera. And then you have all of the things that come with uh, the cannabis industry, you just mentioned stigma, but also just how these things get done and their security, et cetera. What's the one or two kind of biggest roadblocks that you, you see them, you know, you're going to have to address them and, and you're going to have to figure out how to make sure that you're good about getting some of the hardest problems for a, a product like this to, to get really launched and, and be utilized across the industry. The biggest concern I think a lot of people would have would be the volatility of crypto. They feel like there's a lot of booms and busts. Uh, and that's why we're, we're basically using stable coin as, the, as the, the big basis point for crypto that we're using for payment. The reason why for that is one, one USDC is one dollar. It's, uh, it's not like Bitcoin or Ethereum where it can go up and down and have volatility. Okay, so there's some consistency to that. Yes. Are there any other things on the legal and, and regulatory side that you think Oh, Are yeah. you really going to have to make sure you're really rock solid on before you can be successful? Absolutely. I think whenever you bring up legal and compliance, people right. kind of cringe back like, uh, I want to get somebody else on that. But I think um, there's just going to be a lot of changes and it's going to be a lot of up and down before we have a lot of secure kind of like a stable heartbeat with this, right. right? And so I think that that's obviously going to be something that people are going to kind of uh, shrink back at. But I think for our company, the way that I put it and explain it to to people is that it's only going to get better. The more regulation you have, honestly, it's the better. And I know that's coming from the lawyer, right? But at the same time, I think it makes it to where it's easier to follow and it's easier for you to know what you can and cannot do so that you're able to stay in business. 
when it's kind of up in the air and you're not sure and they're still kind of formulating laws, I kind of compare it to the mortgage crisis back in 2008 and 11, right? That was something that was super volatile and we didn't know what was going on. Then after the regulations were passed, at least they may have been stringent, but at least you know what you can and cannot do. And it made it safer for both sides of, of the coin, really. And I think that's the same thing that's going to happen, not only in the cannabis industry, but in the crypto on the crypto side as well. Again, regulation is not where it should be, where we're talking about cryptocurrency, where we stay within stable coin and we're able to build a company over. It. And there's other companies that have been successful doing the same thing. So we're taking a model that's not so much reinventing the wheel, but trying to bring technology and modernization into an industry that really hasn't seen a lot of change and uptick in a very long time. Um, and it's ripe for the change, right? It's ripe for the industry. And so that education, instead of us shying away from it as a weakness or as something that we, we know it's going to be an obstacle that we will have to overcome. Yeah. But I think it's something exciting to talk about because, again, we are knowledgeable in both sides of this. And then also looking at it from a legal perspective, who better to talk about these <laughs> things, you know, than a compliance attorney as well, um, because we know that rules are going to be put in place. And so instead of trying to navigate around it until a rule is placed, we kind of work within the regulation because everything kind of follows a pattern in some type way shape or form even if it's within a new industry and so just trying our best to navigate those things and having the cybersecurity and the technical assistance of software is really cool because then you're able to build in rules build in some of that right. flexibility and if something does change we adapt we don't just leave it broken you know what i mean that's you the thing about a digital uh, frontier is that ad adaptation is a lot quicker than having to knock down some walls in a physical right. location or, or right. do something like that, that's, that's a lot more time consuming, harder to execute, et cetera. And also sounds like one of the main missions of stable pay is bringing a lot of legitimacy to these two okay. industries that have, have been kind Absolutely. of unsure. A lot of people are unsure of so far. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So your sounds like you both are first time entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you've already mentioned you've been working through the process and the ecosystem and you're meeting people and you're connecting and you're, and you're going to organizations like OVF, you're doing all the great, right stuff. Tell us each of you kind of one of the most surprising things you've learned about being an entrepreneur, about, about trying to take an idea and create something and then eventually get funding. What's something that was unexpected, whether it was easier than you thought it was going to be or harder than you thought it was going to be? It's definitely been been harder, right? Uh, but you don't know what you don't know. True. Uh, so a lot of the things just kind of figuring out the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns, right? <laughs> um, uh, and being able to adapt as you come across those. Um, it's it's been a been a been a process with doing the funding part because I've never done uh, the, a pitch deck before. I've never done uh, like work to get a like a start evaluation before. So it's all been a very interesting process. It's been bumps in the roads the whole way, but it's been fun the whole way. If it's worth doing, it's gonna have it's gonna be kind of hard to do, right? Yeah. Absolutely. How about you? Yeah, so this is actually would be the second company that I've helped to formulate. And in my business, I help businesses formulate and register their company. So being on the startup side of it is new. Being an entrepreneur, not so much new. Um, and also family. I have family that are also entrepreneurs. So watching people build up a business, especially my parents are immigrants. So coming here, they kind of started with nothing, built up something, and that's how you know, we were raised. And so seeing that um, it, it's a difference in how we build relationships. I think, like you said, 10 years ago would be a bit different type of atmosphere than where we are now. Thinking about 20 years ago is a completely different aspect economically. It was hard. It was hard back in those days. <laughs> Absolutely. The build, but also it's kind of a community feel, which is what we're trying to do as well. We're wanting to build a company that is local to the Oklahoma City area and specific to that. And I think maybe some years ago, it might have even been a little bit easier, believe it or not, just with the technology um it was a lacking so you you had to get out there in the community and you had to really be there and i think that same spirit really helps with mm -hmm. this and so i did not think how um clear and how great it would be to build these relationships with these different organizations and communities in our own community and in the state of oklahoma and how welcoming and how just nice people are with sharing information truly because a lot right. of times people are like oh you know the competition is going to be rough and not saying that it isn't but people are more willing to give and mentor and just educate than anything else and i really love that about oklahoma and building this this company has really shown me the value of relationships here all the great things about why we love living in oklahoma and now <laughs> entrepreneurism, venture capital, et cetera, is caught up to that. Absolutely. So we could have the best of both worlds, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Ryan Inc. and QK will be pitching February, 2023. They'll be our pitch presenter for OVF. Please make sure you attend the meeting, listen to the pitch, meet them, 
ask questions if you're someone who maybe is interested in investing or partnering or mentoring or providing insight or anything else. All those things we need as entrepreneurs, right, to help them get uh, this product into the marketing and get to a success level that we all think that they're going to do. Thank you guys so much for talking to me. Like I said earlier, I'm not an expert in in cannabis <laughs> or in in crypto, but I do understand that these industries are happening. They're expanding quickly, that there's a lot of problems to be solved and great businesses usually come out of a problem that needs to be solved. So congratulations on identifying something that you can do. And I'm interested to hear your pitch in February, 2023 at OVF and appreciate you talking to me on the podcast today. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you.